and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for a trade. Forest is risky business and this is a personal opinion only. So webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. Okay, I, guys, I will be uh, explaining uh, other parts of webinar where we will be seeing live charts and Chris will explain about swings and then I will take over and show you live chart examples and how to determine it on live chart. So Chris, you can continue with your part and after you're finished, I will take over. Thank you. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Nanad, for the disclaimer. Um, I'm going to take over because we actually had planned it in such a way that I'll show what the swing is, and then Nanad is going to take a look at how to use it. So it's a bit more convenient if we do it this way. I just had some uh, issues with uh, security. All right, so let's skip those slides. Nanad already nicely introduced that. And uh, don't forget Supreme Edition. You can find it on the Admiral Markets website. And we're going to talk about, first of all, what is a swing high, swing low, before Nenet is going to share his view about how to use it. So what are swing highs, swing lows? Let me open the chat box here so I can get your comment. When you look at this chart, we're going to have probably... You know, all the participants in here are going to have a different answer. It's quite funny if you ask, I mean, I'm not going to, it's difficult for you to interact with this chart, of course, but if we would give you the opportunity to actually draw on this chart, send it by email, it will be quite fascinating in a way how everyone will pick their own kind of tops and bottoms and have their own view on that. So is it something that indeed we can make more, let's say, work towards a common answer or will we always have these differences? Well, I think we can certainly find a common ground on a lot of things. There will always be some differences, though. And that's why we're going to have this discussion in this webinar. Because I think that we can certain rules, introduce certain rules that will make it, let's say, our, our answers a bit more um, equal to each other. Because otherwise, without this, it will be really a wide range of answers. You know, what is a swing, first of all? Well, basically, if price has, for instance, a bottom here and a top in here, that's an area where we can say, okay, this is a clear top and bottom, right? And uh, that is basically a swing. A swing is nothing less than a piece of price action that belongs to each other. So you have different ways of calling it. You have, you can call it swing high, swing low, or a swing, or a leg. It all means the same. It's a piece of price action that belongs to each other, okay? All right. Now, here you can take a look. And uh, now we added the tool or two, as you can see, the fractal and the oscillator. And I'll be introducing that a bit more later on. And you can see the chart maybe looks already a bit different. Maybe you already have a bit different perspective about what could be a swing high, swing low. Uh, if you look at, for instance, the fractals, they could already give you an, an idea. That already helps, but anyhow. Let's start with identifying. We're going to start at the very core of the chart, which is the candle. And we're going to take it step by step. We're first going to look, by looking whether a swing is bullish or bearish, we actually have to look at the basic unit. What is the candle doing? Right? Is the candle bullish or bearish? For instance, we have the arrows, orange arrow. That situation, that candle right there is a bullish candle. We had a couple of bullish candles prior to that and just two bearish. So at that moment, right, we're already looking at a potential bullish swing. How about the next arrow, the bullet, the blue arrow there? It's a, it's a red candle. It's a bearish candle. You can see that until that moment, we've had a strong upside already, right? Price has been already pushing up and up and up and up. We're only pausing at the moment. So at this point of view, we're looking at a bullish swing. How about this purple arrow? Well, in the meantime, we can see that price wasn't able to break through the top, right? We had a failure to push through, and we actually are breaking through the support, which means that at the purple arrow, we could probably already say this top is solid, this top is formed. We couldn't say that at the blue arrow. That was not clear at that point. But at the purple arrow, 
when price is breaking through support, making double top, not being able to break through the resistance, we can conclude that probably this swing from this bottom up to this top, there's a good chance that that has been completed, that has been finished, right? And how about at this green arrow? Well, at that point where the green arrow is, we can actually conclude that the downside correction from here to here has been completed. So naturally we can see that, right? But how do we define it in a more rules-based kind of approach? Because if we leave it like that, we'll, it will be too vague. It's maybe clear now, but it's, we have to work a bit more on the definition. But I think you can just, as I go along, understand at least the, the, the feeling I want to give for seeing swings. But it all starts with the candle effect, right? The candle is the, the basic unit, the smallest unit. And when you look at the candle, uh, we try to see if it's bullish or bearish. And we try to see if there's a sequence of candles and whether there's a mixture of candles. Because what does that say? Basically, when we look at the sequence of candles, because now we're not only looking at one candle, but multiple candles, we start to look at whether price is looking impulsive or correction, right? And basically, what is the idea of impulse? When does the impulse end here? What is the key characteristic that price is ending here? What can we say defines that? And that is the failure to break the higher low. That is the key definition here. That's why we can say at the purple arrow, that swing high, swing low is over, where we have the green levels. The failure to break the high and the low. That's when the correction also starts. How about the impulse? Where does the impulse start and the correction end? That's actually when we have a break of a higher low. For instance, here, this is an impulse, but where does that impulse really start? We could have various answers on it. I'm not saying any of those could be could be right or wrong. I mean, some of them could be right, some of them could be wrong. Basically, for me, the break of the higher the low, in this case, or the top. In this case, probably this one. Maybe even a candle higher low already, right? But I think that this is a more sturdier level. In this case, also here, this support level means that this is over, right? And the correction is probably uh, starting. So those are two key kind of definitions we're going to keep in mind with understanding uh, the candles and the swings. So the next thing is when to recognize there's a change. When is there a failure to break a high and a low? When is there actually a break of the high and low? As I already was trying to speculate in the previous slide, when does that moment happen? In general, we have three levels of the chart. We have the candle, we have the swing, and we have the trend. The candles, they, they are basically the, the, you know, the basic unit and a swing will have a lot of candles in that swing and a trend will have multiple swings in it so when you have a trend a trend could look something like this all of those basically are swings multiple swings within one trend and within one swing when we zoom into one swing from here let's say from red to red when we zoom into that piece we'll have multiple candles actually within that swing so we have to answer these two questions, the failure to break and when does a break occur on these three levels. Now, because we're today talking about swing, I will only be talking about these two things and not about the trend because that's a different webinar. So when is there a failure to break the candle high and when is there a failure to break the swing high? Those were the things we're trying to explain right here. All right, continuing with when to recognize a change. That's why fractals, in my opinion, are important because when we look at a chart without fractals, like on the left here, or with fractals, I think the chart already becomes a lot more better organized. The fractals are kind of like mini swings. All the price action between fractals is a bit of a swing, but it's not a big swing. 
So when we look at, for instance, uh, this fractal here and this fractal here, where I have the blue circle, that's a swing. Is it the major swing? I don't know. We'll talk about that later on. But it's certainly a mini swing. It indicates that, why is that a mini swing? Because fractals, right, indicate the moment when two candles cannot break a high. What does that mean? That means when you're in an impulse, candle, 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 pushing up and up and up, right? One candle doesn't, next one does, each time setting a new high in this bullish impulse, right? That is the continuation, it keeps breaking the high. Remember that that's our definition. The, the momentum is the breaking the high. Failure to break the high means the change. So when do we first recognize a potential change, the failure? Well, that's when two candles don't break the recent high. When two candles don't break the recent high, it's a first indication that perhaps something else is going on, that perhaps we're not continuing. And a fractal occurs. So when a fractal is on the chart, that means we're having a mini pause, in my opinion. That's how I look at the chart. So fractal is already a first clue. The next part, in my opinion, is time factor. Because time factor is something that indicates more important swings, more major swings. Time factor, when looking at this chart below, when looking at the purple boxes, those are the, the major swings. The purple boxes are the major fractals according to time factor. And the purple lines are the major swings. So you can see when using fractals, we have actually multiple mini swings here to here to here and here. Those are three swings using fractals, but they're actually only it's only one swing when using time factor. Or how about the next one? One, two, also three within one, right? So you, you get I hope you get this point. If if anyone doesn't, just raise your hand or write that in the chat. So what is time factor though? I mean, I talked about it in live trading labs a lot. So some of you might know, others probably maybe not. Time factor is when, and this is how I use it at least, candle number one to six, five to six, keeps pushing for a new high. That means that every candle that pushes for a high is great. That's still impulse. But if six candles do not break the most recent high, then that impulse is over. And that, that means that this has become a swing high, swing low. So what does that mean? It means that some fractals will not be considered major and are minor fractals. What does that mean? That means that uh, basically when price keeps pushing here within one to six candles, that means that it's still part of this swing, it's still part of that momentum, it's still part of that push, that bullish momentum here. Only when it doesn't break for seventh or more, in fact, it starts to become probably a correction. Like for instance here, or for instance here, right? So that's how I identify the, the more important swings. Now, ultimately, to have a swing, we need two spots, a bottom and a top, a bottom and a top, or a top and a bottom. That's why the purple lines are connecting from here to there, to there, to there, to there, to there, and then to here. But these actually are not used because there's no top that connects to them. There's nothing here. These are these are swings, these are fractals, excuse me, that are not considered major because they don't have six to seven candles, six candles actually uh, failing to break. So because of that, there are three bottoms in play here and one top. So I choose the lowest bottom for the swing. Okay. Now look at this chart. I know it's a bit busy, but Basically, you're looking at a chart where we have a lot of fractals. The green circle fractals are less important because they're actually fractals, but they get broken within a few candles after that. Or 
we have the purple ones, and those are the major ones. Right? Those are the major ones on this chart because they have six uh, more than seven candles not breaking them. That means that they are considered the more important swings. Now, time factor I consider medium swings because we also have, in my opinion, larger swings, even larger ones. And that we can use the awesome oscillator or probably any oscillator perhaps, maybe the MACD2, but I use the oscillator. And uh, the difference here with the oscillator is the fact that I'm waiting for price to, or the oscillator bars, to go back to the zero line. The zero line is in the middle. The zero line here, you, see the, you don't see the zero here probably, but that is the zero line smack in the middle. It defines whether the bars are above or below. That middle line is very important because when price is going back to them, let's take a look at this situation here. The histogram bars are going away from the middle, from the middle zero line and then going back to it. And then eventually they reach the middle line. What does that mean? That means that once the bar has gone back to the middle line, that the swing is completed. That means that from here to here is one swing according to the oscillator. From here to here is one swing according to the oscillator. Same thing for actually this bottom and this top according to the oscillator. So the oscillator has a bit different way of looking at it, it has actually less swings. That's why I call it like the, the basically the biggest way to look at swings because it will ignore more tops and bottoms. All right. Now, um, we can also use moving averages. All right. But this might be a bit too complex. Moving averages help with identifying the trend and support or resistance. Long-term moving averages can be used for trend. Like for instance, here we see green is long-term up, purple long-term down. Green long-term up. Very simple. The short-term ones could indicate the momentum or correction within the trend. So you can see orange and purple, momentum is down, trend is down. Green and purple, probably correction with trend down, and etc. That's how you can use moving averages. But moving averages, in fact, would deserve an entire separate webinar. So I don't want to dive into to that too much. But basically, the hierarchy of the market, in my opinion at least, and this is, of course, just how I look at the market, and there could be other people with different views. That's fine. But this is, this is the way I look at it. I see candles. I see fractal level. I see impulse and corrections. I see time swings. I see oscillator swings, and I see the trend each step basically being a bit bigger. And um, so, yeah, that's it. Basically, you got the candle, and uh, we can read the candle if, if, it's, if it's bullish or bearish, understand what the fractals are, then understand if that piece of, that leg is an impulse or correction, and is the, is the, is the swing according to the time fractal, according to the oscillator, and then basically those swings will make the trend. That's how I look at the hierarchy. You can also use wave analysis, by the way, for that, but that's a different topic. We talked about that two weeks ago and a week ago. Take a look at Ivan Market's YouTube channel if you want more info about that. I'm not going to talk about it. just wanted to make you aware that swings are very highly interconnected with waves, and if you are interested, then last week's webinar is better for that, but I'm not going to dive into details about that. We want to take a look a bit, a few minutes at the live charts to kind of look at a real life situation instead of just theory. I got two questions, I think. Swings, you can look at swings on all time frames. It depends on your trading plan. If, let's say, depends on which time frame you're looking at the trend. If you're looking at a, well, you can use it on all time frames. In all honesty, you can, it, it really doesn't matter. It depends on uh, when you want to capitalize on it. For instance, if you're trading um, the trend on a four-hour chart, it could be good to look at maybe one-hour momentums, for instance. Or if you're trading the trend on the daily chart, it could be good to look at four-hour momentums. Um, 
in general. But even if you look at a four-hour trend, it's nothing wrong with looking at a four-hour swing either. You know? So I think it's quite flexible. It really depends on, um, on what you prefer. They are basically, it happens on all time frames, so it really is dependent on your time, uh, sorry, on your trading plan. Um, there's really no difference. Well, the difference between a five minute and one hour chart, well, it's just faster, in, in fact. I mean, it's maybe more difficult, it's more vulnerable to news. The spread will be a higher impact, of course, of your trading. Those are really the differences. Otherwise, the market is dominated by by impulse and correction, and that does happen on all time frames. That really does not change. So let's take a look at some examples, and then I'll pass it over to Nenet, and he'll uh, discuss what he thinks about swings, how he looks at it, uh, at legs, and how he uses it. So let's take a look. This is the Euro Yen one hour chart, right? now. Let me get, get uh, rid of those fibs. All right. Now, let me, it's difficult to choose a spot perhaps, but okay. Let me, if we're looking at it yesterday in the live trading room, for instance, we were looking at this swing high swing low, right? From here to here, okay? Now bear with, bear with me, I will talk about now too, but here, okay? That was a swing high, swing low. But why? why? Well, first of all, we can see the oscillator has gone back to the zero line in the meantime. So this was the first time it hit, crossed the zero line, and this was the last time it crossed back, right? So that means that this is the swing high, swing low according to the oscillator. But how about time factor? Did that say the same? Actually, time factor said the same thing. That sometimes happens because this was one push. There was a small pause here, but in fact, the candle broke the high here. So it was a continuation. So from a time factor point of view, it was actually a swing high, swing low, high two. So at what point did we know that this was not actually going to, this was going to be a likelihood of a top? Well, from an oscillator point of view, when it's back to the zero line, it's confirmed. But actually when it has three red bars, we already have a first indication. That means actually from an oscillator point of view here. From a time factor point of view, it was six candles. One, two, three, four, five, six. That means here actually, but further in this case. That's not always like that though. So at the, these vertical lines, we knew that this was probably going to be over. Right? Now, that was the failure to break and that we could be in a correction. All right? this correction actually went deeper. And one of the reasons was because it broke through support here, in fact, but still, um, anyhow, I don't want to get into to details, but this was a correction, right, as we can see. When do we know that that correction ended, right? The correction ended as soon as basically price broke back here. Right? That was a break. If we go back to our slides, we're looking at uh, the moment that impulse ends, that was here, and correction starts, that was here. And when does correction end? When the new impulse starts, right? And this was the new impulse. Now, some of you might be thinking, this is perhaps impulse two, and you are right on that, actually. We can see that this was an impulsive correction, in fact. Just like this was impulse, the downside was impulse two. And why is that? Because we had actually candles keeping and cutting the low and low and low. So from that point of view, we can consider that a, a impulsive correction. When does that impulsive correction end? When we had a failure to break here, six candles, and when we had the third oscillator bar being green. That's the moment when we had a, a higher likelihood of this being a swing high, swing low. And that's why one of the reasons um, in fact, there was an earlier reason for going looking for longs here during the live webinar, and that had to do with support and resistance. The trend on the four-hour chart was still down, right? But even in the live webinar, I was already looking for longs earlier just because of the fact that we had bullishness here and we're going back to support and a fib 
and expecting a turnaround. But that's actually, from this point of view, an early kind of attempt to trade the turnaround. The more confirmed way to trade is by taking or waiting for the break at this high, at least. All right, now we can see at this moment that we're back in an upside. This is a bullish leg at the moment. And why is that? Because the candles are keeping its push. So how do I use that information? Well, basically, when trading swings, I'm either trading in the swing, so I know that this is a bullish swing at the moment. When I'm trading in the swing, I would zoom into lower time frames most of the time to the one hour chart. When I'm trying to trade the change of a swing, I could stay on that chart. I know this is maybe getting a bit complicated, but basically let's go back to the past here. You see this swing high, swing low? Yeah. Basically, if I'm trading in the swing, within this part most of the time, because you're waiting for the confirmation of the swing, then I would be trading it most likely on the lower time frame. I could even trade the four hour candles as well. If I'm trading the turnaround, right, let's say that this was correction here, then I would be waiting for the break often, a break of these fractals, for instance, or the break of a candle, trying to catch the start of a new impulse. That would be more of a swing trade. That's a trade, that's a swing. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot, let's say, an intermediate length of a trade. Could be a few days, maybe. Whereas if I'm trading after that, I'm trying to trade part of this leg, and then it's, it's a shorter time frame trade because the trade, the leg is already on its way. So what I try to identify is, is the leg on its way? Or is it just starting? Is it just changing? If it's just changing, there's a higher potential for a, a longer move. If it's already on its way, then you know there could be still some push left. There could be still some movement left, but it's going to um, the chances of a very long move are just decreasing. So, any questions? I know that. Uh, Probably we would need to go through more examples. Maybe we can do that at a different time on the live webinar next week. Caitlin indeed was looking at the euro yen upside. I'm not sure how the trade exactly went, but it was a good job for Caitlin that uh, regarding the direction. And uh, yeah, one of the things here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six candle right there. Where the purple line is, all right. So in zooming into the hourly chart, what could be done? Well, then of course, things like a retracement of this candle can be traded. You know, then it all depends on how you trade. What is your trading plan? Would you use fibs? Would you fib this candle, take a 38, or take a break of this fractal, etc. Let's see. We got one question: If the leg has already started, then how to trade it? by going on hourly. Yep, typically, you if the leg is on the way, then you want to zoom into lower time frames and check um, for breakouts. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is overextension and supportive resistance, because in this case, the leg is already on its way. What you want to be careful of is, is that you don't start taking breakout trades, let's say, in, in this zone, because then, you might get caught at the turning spot, which is not, of course, what we want. We want to avoid that. We want to take a breakout. Still, breakout still here is, is okay. Maybe even here is okay, but eventually you want to be careful. And that's a different topic again, because then you have to look at divergence on maybe lower an hour chart or a 30-minute chart or even 15 if they're double divergences. You want to look at the daily chart or four-hour chart perhaps to look at where are the very strong support and resistance levels that could stop this, this swing. But at the moment, we are in a bullish leg. We are in a bullish momentum because we have sturdy four-hour candles and we broke resistance. And uh, yeah, this is a bullish swing. And it's you know equivalent of about being here, but we are not sure if it can continue. We never know.
This, if you're looking at the daily chart, right, could be different. Let's take a look. Daily chart, what do we see here? Daily chart, we're looking at, actually, this is a bullish swing. Now, why is that a bullish swing? Well, simple, because, first of all, the oscillator has uh, turned here already and it's been going up. We have time factor rules stating that this is a bottom. This was a top, but that was been broken. Remember that impulse starts when something breaks. That broke. And did we have failure? Well, one, two, three, four. Uh, this was the break. So now we're looking for failure. When is the momentum going to stop? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth date. So far, it's still part of momentum. All right. But if tomorrow doesn't break, then it's over. So far, it's still upside momentum. All right. But if tomorrow doesn't break, then the momentum is over. So, so far, this was the start, the end we don't know. And this was the break of the opposite direction, of the correction. Now, Caitlin says, I see three red candles. So that could be already the start of the opposite momentum. How do we know that? We need failure here. Tomorrow doesn't break the, the resistance is one thing. And the next thing would be the break of support. And then we could have momentum to the opposite direction. So from that point of view, this and this, important levels. All right, that wraps up my side. I'm going to hand it over to Nenit. Thank you, Chris. So great to have you back with us. So now... Uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about some technical and I will uh, open live chart. So what is a swing trading definition, uh, technical swing trading and correct swing high-low live chart? So there is today's agenda for my part. So swing definition is a style of trading which usually tries to capture gains during the week. So the, the primary definition of swing trading is that if you pass one day and if any trade has uh, has been held more than one day, it's basically a swing trade. And typically swing trades are done by weekly candle, okay? So, you're, for example, you're starting your day, your trading day on Monday, and you want to capture that uh, on Friday before actually next week comes. So, uh, that is what, what most of traders do. And uh, if uh, you love to trade uh, longer term, then you're basically longer term swing traders. So, you need to distinguish between those two things. So, you have uh, trades which are swings during the week and trades which are swings during the month or maybe the year. Okay? Uh, you know that I use uh, the term scalp swings. Scalp swings are trades which are basically something in between scalps and intraday positioning. Okay, so that is my proprietary term. I need to say I have invented it, and the scalp swing is something in between. But let's stick to standard technical analysis. Uh, the, the the analysis which has been widely accepted uh, uh, from a trader's perspective is. The swing trading is done during the week and longer term trading is done during the month. So any trade which is held more than a day counts for a swing. Okay. The goal of swing trading is to locate short term trends, ride the trends and then exit when the move ends. Okay. So that is the goal. Okay. Not all goals are always reached. You know that uh, we are basically doing some swing trades during uh, our uh, session recaps. And uh, most of those uh, hit the target price, but the thing is, we just are never sure whether the price will be hit or uh, when it will be hit. But definitely, it's good that we are in profit. Mistakes can be costly because, uh, you know, you need to suffer from, uh, psychologically, you will need to withstand a drawdown. Because usually during uh, swing trading, there are some uh, drawdowns which needs to be resisted you you not not you you never you should never stare at the chart while you do swing trading especially if you do intra week swings then you just need to enter the position make your stop loss make your target and check it once in a while okay because too much staring too much uh, thinking about the trade can either 
can either give you uh, an early exit from a profitable position or uh, potentially closing your trade and then uh, reversing the position because you are you're you're not familiar with swing concepts so swing trades are totally different from psychological point of view from intraday trades so if you do swing trades don't stare at the charts step away from your pc and uh, i don't know do something else but don't stare do not check it each hour if it's meant to be for a whole week then let it go okay I personally don't do that, but I know traders could do that. I know how it should be done, but I'm, it's not my style of trading. Okay, I am pretty much uh, aggressive trader sometimes, so you know I, I am just not in the mood to trade one trade per, per per week or one trade per month. But sometimes, guys, it should be done because sometimes it can basically give you good profits without psychological pressure. Okay. So, there are technical swing trading, fundamental swing trading. Uh, pros and cons. Pros for swing trading eliminates noise, eliminates nervousness, there is no babysitting, great risk to reward, and basically it's risk averse. So, you will be pretty much safe from, as I say, from psychological point of view, okay? And uh, the thing is, you will always be careful when you do uh, swing trading from uh, intraman perspective because it's it's a lot of uh, it, it, it's a substa you can suffer from a huge drawdown if there there is any macroeconomic news. Just imagine, guys, uh, those traders who who shorted euro dollar and now they're in a huge drawdown. Why? Because there was a major news announcement yesterday. Uh, FOMC. Uh, didn't give us any clue about rate hike and what 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 is it's it's very dovish okay the statement was very dovish because almost all of the members of the FOMC were against rate hike at this point and also uh, they they want to see better uh, they want to see better inflation data they want to see better unemployment data then they will decide about a rate hike so so far uh, results from USA have been mixed, but it's not good for swing traders because those traders who've been in profit, let's say 100 or 200 pips, now they're probably in, in a loss. Okay, so that is why I'm saying it's not for everyone. Okay, it's not for everyone. Uh, so swing trading is a style of trading when you held positions longer than a day, and it's extremely risk averse because it helps you to protect your capital. You won't be scalping, you won't be doing reverse trades, you won't be doing counter trend trades, it's one trade, let it go. Hit and run, okay? Uh, okay, it's not hit and run. Set and forget. Set and forget. Uh, cons are false breakouts, okay? Because uh, the market may be very, very prone to a lot of uh, false breakouts before starting uh, on next leg of movement then it requires a lot of patience so it's not for people who and traders who don't have a lot of patience uh, it's usually contrarian uh, style of trading fading the strength buying into weakness okay and you can suffer as i said from a drawdown during retracements okay uh, what is technical swing trading technical swing trading is basically using different tools to analyze tops and bottoms of a particular market Opposed to fundamental swing trading, uh, it basically has its uh, basis in technical charts and technical analysis. Fundamental swing trading is something else. Forex market is very often, very often driven by fundamentals such as major economical news announcements, number releases, central bank meetings, interventions, and a lot of other events. For example, as I always say yesterday, FOMC. Uh, uh, declared that there was no rate hike. They, they were thinking about rate hike, but they're not sure when. So basically, market switched from a, a bearish uh, uh, euro dollar momentum to bullish. And that is why I provided you with a good explanation of uh, pre-FOMC. Uh, that was the analysis of euro dollar. And I was very clear uh, what can happen. So I gave you levels. And now, if you if you went long today, you would have been in a good profit because euro dollars starting from yesterday was long. Now we need to see 
it's another story. Uh, I think we can do it on Monday on our session recap. If it will hit the 1260, I think it can be a good place to short. So, guys, uh, everything is clear, right? So you don't need to be afraid. It's nothing unusual uh, what happens after FOMC. And uh, basically, some of the or some of traders who actually love to uh, swing trade. They went into euro dollar longs, and that counts as swing trade. Okay, so technical swing trading is using different tools to analyze tops and bottoms of a particular market. We use Bollinger Bands, EMA, CCI, D marker, on balance volume, historical support levels, stochastics. So those are tools which usually are used in a swing, technical swing trading. We use 20 SMA, 200 EMA, 100 SMA, 100 EMA. Typically, these numbers for swing trading, okay? Uh, the question is, any particular time frame for swing trading? Guys, uh, now, you will uh, hear for, from a lot of traders that they do swing trades on four-hour time frame. So four-hour time frame is typical uh, swing time frame, okay? Uh, traders who want to do longer time frame trading, they even do with weekly charts, but I'm really don't, I, I don't, uh, uh, I can say I'm not recommending it because trading on weekly charts can take years to develop. Okay, so you know, 24 candles. Okay, 24 candles on weekly chart is equal to 24 weeks, excluding Sunday candle, which our platform does not show. So it's it's a really you know it's it's. For, the, for those people who want to invest, it's a good option, but for people who trade, because trading is not the same as trading for investing. Investing is, is a little bit different. You do it on higher time frames. So it's different. Yes, one hour can be good, because if you trade one hour, your trade can last for, I don't know, one or three days. If you go off with four hours, your trade can last for a week. Okay? So... I, I sometimes I do it. I call it swing scalps. Uh, you know, it's not a typical swing because I uh, and it's not a typical scalp. Scalping positions are usually held for five, ten minutes, right? Sometimes even less than five minutes. Scalp swings can be held between two and three minutes and basically one and two hours. So it's it's something different. It's in between intraday and scalps, uh, but. Typically, it's done on four hour. You can do it on one hour, uh, not below. And uh, uh, some people, even who work, who have the, their jobs, they do it on daily chart. So four hour to daily chart chart is a typical swing trading option. Okay. Then we can do with a hybrid FIBO spanning from today's day one open to today's high low. So I will show you how to do hybrid uh, FIBO spanning. Okay. Uh, we will be seeing everything on live chart. So using R3 and S3 pivot points for rejections, new entries, uh, starting from, uh, I need to say, very soon, I will be giving you for uh, major pairs R3 and S3. And you need to know, guys, when R3 or S3 are hit, there is 80% chance that the price will reverse. I, I do it very often uh, when I do counter trade trades, and I have a special pivot point indicator uh, which gives me R3 and S3 pivot points. It's it's uh, it's coded, so it's, it's it doesn't have source code. It's not free, but I will provide you with R3 and S3 pivot points. So just for all of you to know, when price hits R3 and S3 or S3, there is 80% of chance that you will be in a profit. Initially, you will be in profit. You don't know whether you will get 20, 30, 50 pips. But at least you can get at least 15 pips because R3 and S3 rejections are par powerful. It, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it happens, it's powerful. Okay, and I think that that is the point where you can do short or long trade, okay? Don't forget it. This is, guys, 
one of typical examples how you determine swing for so points for various So basically, this is how you determine proper swing points. Having swing high, having swing low. In a in a chart pattern, it looks like this. This is right. This is uh, a flag. Okay. So you have swing high, swing low. Okay. It's easy. Okay. If you have a pennant, for example, like this. Okay. This can be swing high. This can be swing low. Triangle swing points. Okay, this was swing low, this was swing high. Next swing is this. This is next swing low. Okay, so that, that is, okay. Uh, Carolyn uh, is saying sometimes we spot a pin, we enter, the next candle is a bigger pin, it takes us out. You, you need to know where you should trade pins. Not every level is uh, pin bar trading. And you need to have bigger stop loss sometimes. You know, uh, Investor, investor, investor traders, big banks and big money, smart money is not dumb. They know that you have entered somewhere around here and they can spike you out just to reverse subsequently. So you need to be careful and you need to do it with a lower risk limit. We will be talking about it. Uh, when you have flat range market, it's very easy to, di to distinguish important swing points. So this is swing high, this is swing low. Initially, when you spot range flat market, just roll back to the left of your charts and you will see most important swing points. So this is swing low, this is this is swing high, this is swing low. Charts will go like this, and sometimes this is what you what you say. Sometimes you can be spiked out, but this is from this perspective. Now this is the most important swing low, and this is still most important swing high. Okay? Why? Because there was no subsequent high which pushed through this high. Okay? So this was swing high, this was swing low. Until here, okay, until here, this was most obvious, most important swing low. Up here, from this point up, this is most important swing low, and this is still most important swing high. Now, when this high is broken here, this is not most important swing high. This is most important swing high, this is most important swing low. M pattern, okay, this is most important swing high, but you see, this is very important level because every, every buyer has been rejected below this part. So that is why we mark M pattern like this. This is seller, this is seller, this is seller, this is also seller. And you see this level is holding, okay? So for M pattern, we need to clarify important part, which is point two. So this is two, this is three, okay? So when point two is broken, you go with the trade, okay? M is a bearish pattern, okay? This is M, you see, it looks like M letter, this one. It's bearish pattern. This is when you break this part, you go down, okay? You go down. Uh, a question, uh, please do one more webinar uh, using better volume indicator. Yes, I will do that, but it's not time for, for us to talk about it. Yes, I will do that, I promise, guys, so don't worry, okay? Now, let's move on. Uh, establishing correct swing. Now, I will open live chart to show you. Fibonacci retracement tool. Chart patterns, Bollinger Bands, but these settings, guys, remember, you, you don't use Bollinger on 20. You use Bollinger Bands or 100 or 200, okay? Okay? Yes, Carolyn, you're right about them, uh, but concentrate on this now. Bollinger Bands, 100 and 200 for swing trading. Zigzags, channels, historical price action levels. Okay? Live chart. Time for our live chart, guys. Okay? 
Let's open live charts. So, daily chart. You always start with a daily chart, okay? Let's do other pair because this is not uh, so clear. So, this is daily chart of Euro dollar. So, open up your daily chart every day, okay? Every day you open up your daily chart. Then, what you do is, uh, let's say that I will use blank template for this. So, guys, open up your daily chart. Press Control Epsilon, you will get these lines. If you span these lines, you will see that this is basically 3rd of August, 1st of September. Okay? So you see, it's a big time span. 1st of July, okay, 3rd of August. So it's something like a month. If you if you do it on daily chart. Okay? Now what is important? Daily chart is good because it can give you Historical support resistance, okay? Yes, for daily Camarilla is set on monthly, but now we are not talking about the Camarilla. You, I'm, I'm showing you how to manually draw those lines, okay? This is manual now drawing. So, for example, we are here, okay? Now we know that this is very important resistance, guys, because in the history, this happened a lot of times. And especially, it's very important, it's very important, guys, that you know that previous month it's important because forex market is unique uh, versus let's say when you compare it to uh, indices because indices there are no historic levels of support and and uh, resistance indices are a group of stocks stocks which do not have uh, so price so good price action correlation uh, compared to forex market, so it's easier to draw support resistance lines on forex market than on on indices. Uh, so this is basically most important swing. You see how euro is rejecting because it has history behind it. Now, what is the most important swing point low? Now, obviously, guys, this is most important swing low because you are comparing previous quadrant. Okay, this is the part of my practical naked trading teaching. I will be also teaching you on uh, uh, price action school, but it's not bad that I, I also show you now. So press control epsilon and you will get quadrants. I call it quadrant. Okay, so this is previous previous quadrant. It's very important because price will react if it's hit. Okay, so this is swing high, this is swing low. For example, if you trade it here, you knew that if this swing low hasn't been broken, okay, okay, it will, it could go up, and now it can go down, guys. Okay, it can go down. Uh, epsilon uh, is uh, yeah, it's Y, it's control Y, okay, X Y Z, so it's Y. I call it epsilon because it's a Greek letter actually, but it's it's Y in English. So control Y will give you quadrants. Okay? So this is previous quadrant. And you know that these are important swings. Okay? Now, what are also other important swings? You always look at the previous quadrant. You are not interested that much in these quadrants here. You just look at the previous quadrant. Okay, so this is swing high, this is swing low. Now, this is also important swing low. And this is also important swing high here. And it's enough. You don't need anything more than this. Because price will react somewhere around these lines. Mind you, this is daily chart, so you don't have to be very, very precise. But this is it. This is how you do it. So these are historical levels. Now, you want to go with, for example, one hour chart. You just zoom to one hour chart. Okay, You have most important Swings, you remove, you remove the quadrants, pressing control Y. Yes, Jen, you need only one quadrant, quadrant to look back. You don't need, a, because we are talking for daily chart, uh, and you use it on intraday chart, so you don't need others, okay? So just previous month, okay? Now, one hour chart, remove quadrant. And what would you, what would I do? I would place, Bollinger Band of 100. Okay, uh, let's go. Trend, Bollinger Band, 
100, deviation 2, okay. I would also place Bollinger Band of 200, indicator trend Bollinger Band 200, and I, would, I wouldn't look at this line, but that's another indicator. Let's see if I have it here. Uh, let's see if I have bands indicator. It's called bands. Okay, bands, bands, bands. Oh, not here. Okay, doesn't matter. I, I don't need this middle line, so I will get the indicator. So you just concentrate on Bollinger up and Bollinger down. You don't need to look at these bands. I don't think that I can remove uh, the color of, yeah, this is, I need custom indicator for this. Ah, it doesn't matter, but you understand me, right, guys? You don't look at these middle lines. You just look at the top or the bottom of Bollinger Bands, okay? Just confirm that everything is clear so I can continue. It's important. You don't need the middle lines for Bollinger Bands. Great, okay? Yeah, I, I have the indicator now. Oh, great. I will remove this and I will place bands indicator. Okay, I will place bands indicator. Here is the indicator. Okay, bands. Okay, indicator list. Bands. We don't need these guys. I will remove the middle line. Uh, 100. Okay, 100. Colors. This is the color. Okay, and this will be blue. Okay. This will be also blue. Okay, this is okay. This is hundred Bollinger band. So now let's place two hundred Bollinger band. Okay, let's place it two hundred Bollinger band. None. Okay, let's go with red. So guys, oh, I didn't put. This is 100. This is actually 200. Okay. So you have your swings for Bollinger Bands, guys. Just look how the price react, okay? What did I tell you? You can go with multiple confluences here. So you can go with Bollinger Band confluence. Okay, here is the Bollinger Band confluence. That is why Euro is rejecting now, guys. Okay, it's not coincidence. Okay, look at the confluence, how it's strong here. Okay, historical price level on daily quadrant. Then you have Bollinger Band. You have rejection here. Now, where is the swing, guys? What should we do? We use our Fibonacci retracement, guys. Most obvious swing low, most obvious swing high, guys. Okay, so the next possible rejection could come at 66 where there is a confluence of 200 Bollinger Band and 23.6, and here you can you see a multiple confluence here. Red line, which we have identified as important uh, daily quadrant line and 50% of retracement. Here it's also very important for swings. Now you can also put zigzag indicator here, guys. Okay, zigzag indicator here. Okay, zigzag indicator. What do you see now? You see a clear confirmation that this is indeed a swing. Okay? This is indeed a swing. Do you see how this is how you determine proper swing points? Bollinger bands, daily quadrant lines, okay? Bollinger bands of these settings. Okay, this is how you determine swings. Now, there is also another technique which is called hybrid span on daily so let's do a quick look. Okay, for example, uh, okay, this is. I will use uh, standard uh, blank template, to open daily chart, and for example, let's go in the past. We want to focus on this candle. It doesn't matter. It's the principle is the same. It's called hybrid span of Fibonacci. Okay. Hybrid span of Fibonacci. I will remind you guys, hybrid span of Fibonacci is from today's daily open to today's high and low. So from today's daily open to today's both high and low. Okay? 
So daily open on this candle was 55.79. 55.79. Okay. Let's this this is it. From daily open to daily high and low. We don't have daily high here, but we only have a daily low. So we will plot it from daily open to daily low. Okay, so it's called hybrid. For proper hybrid spanning, we need to have both high and low. So we will use other candle. Let's find this is good candle. So this is hybrid spanning. From daily open to daily high. From daily open to daily low. So this is it, guys. This is also hybrid span. And this is now we don't have the time to actually delve deeply into this, but I will be teaching you hybrid span of Fibonacci on price action course. Okay? So you will I'm I'm sure that you didn't know a lot about this. So that is why I will save all this information for a price action course. But this is important for you to know. This is also where you can spot various confluence levels. And if you zoom in, for example, uh, on the on the chart, okay, you can basically see you can see different levels. We will do that, okay? But you do it only on daily chart, okay? You don't need to do it on any other chart, okay? Only on daily chart, okay? Uh, so that is how you determine swing points, okay? Uh, one more thing, it's important for you to know, sometimes swing points can also be uh, watched through fractals. So if you pl uh, put an indicator, it's called fractal, you know Chris is frequently talking about it, so this is fractal indicator. So this is how you see also swings. Now, obviously, this is not so important swing. But this is also important swing because now you have triple confluence for a swing. You have daily quadrant line, you have Bollinger Band, you have uh, you have uh, fractal. And now remember our teaching of Bolling Bollinger Bands. There is a big chance that this euro dollar will be rejected because this candle went through Bollinger Band and closed below. So during the night there is possibility that euro dollar will reject so that is a proper swing that is a proper swing uh, zoom in to see red lines yes okay this these are the lines okay okay this is the line and you do it by quadrant so you press control y you go with previous quadrant and when you do it on daily chart you will basically have important important monthly resistance and support monthly swing points because these are previous month swing points so you don't need any indicator guys that is why i love to teach you that this price action trading it's 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 more it's it's really much more prettier than it is just by by following indicators there is beauty in this okay there is really beauty in this because you you're doing it without any help of indicators okay just previous quadrant we will we will be uh, learning about this on our price session course but at this point this is not we are already over the time so this is how you can determine proper swing points quadrant lines uh, fractals from time to time Bollinger bands 200 and 100 and Fibonacci, which is very important. So, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for your comments. Uh, uh, and we will be talking about quadrants, yes, in near future. Thank you. Uh, be very careful. To, tomorrow is profit taking. We should see maybe some drop on pound. And uh, we will see. I will be here with you on Monday, okay? Thank you. And as always, guys, trade safe. Cheers. <laughs>